Empire. Welcome to Inside the Cap. I'm your host, Joel Corey. You can find me on Twitter at Corey Joel. That's C-O-R-R-Y-J-O-E-L. You can also read my regular CBSSports.com column, Agents Take on NFL Salary Cap and Contract Matters. This time, we're going to take a look at Debo Samuel's situation. Everyone just assumed that Debo Samuel and the San Francisco 49ers would be working on a contract extension to keep him in San Francisco for the foreseeable future. Um, John Lynch, the general manager, called Samuel a foundational piece shortly after the 49ers lost to the Rams NFC Championship game. But last week was when um, we got a different story. Um, Adam Schechter of ESPN was the first to report that Samuel wasn't interested in a contract extension or, or negotiating. And this was after um, Samuel had scrubbed all references to the 49er uh, from his uh, social media and uh, Instagram accounts. And then last week, uh, Debo Samuel requested a trade, which kind of came out of nowhere. Um, Samuel hasn't publicly spelled out what the issue is, although um, there been there's been chatter that it partially has to do with the role that they put him in last year uh, that he excelled in, the dual role where he was a running back and a wide receiver, which to me uh, gives him unique value. Um, Samuel had a breakout season last year in 2021, was named first team all pro, um, became became one of the NFL's most dangerous offensive weapons, led the NFL with 18.2 yards per catch, Caught 77 passes for 1,400 receiving yards. Had six uh, receiving touchdowns. When the 49ers had injuries at running back, they kind of shifted him there to running back. And he performed at a Pro Bowl level as a running back. Um, Scored eight touchdowns on the ground. uh, Carried the ball 59 times for 365 yards in regular season. 6.2 yards per carry. So he proved that he could play at a high level of two positions, which makes him unique. Um, Had 1,770 yards from scrimmage, combined rushing and receiving yards, which made him, which was third in the NFL. But I can understand why you wouldn't want to be in this dual role. Because running backs take pounding that receivers don't. The longevity for a running back is not the same as a receiver. Playing both roles could shorten his career. Uh, we just saw Devontae Adams and Tyreek Hill sign a second lucrative uh, veteran contract. As a running back, you do not get two bites of the apple to get big money. That won't happen. And the time he spends at running back in addition to receiver could potentially shorten his career and jeopardize a chance to not only get He's going to get this contract, but to get that next one. So I, if that is the true reason, maybe there are other reasons as well. But if that is one, then I definitely uh, understand why he would just strictly want to be a wide receiver. Now, um, 49ers have not been shopping Debo Samuel. They've been getting inquiries from other teams. And John Lynch yesterday at a pre-draft press conference, uh, in his media availability, um, said, I can't ever imagine wanting to move on from Debo. You put yourself through the exercises of, even if we don't have a first-round pick, you have to be thrown in the process and prepare for everything. So you go through it and do that. He's just too good of a player. We've got nothing but love for him and nothing but appreciation for what he's brought, but you just don't let guys like that walk. So I can't envision a scenario where we would trade him. Well, We've seen other teams say stuff like that. The Seattle Seahawks didn't intend, had had no intention of trading Russell Wilson, and a week later, he's gone. When you say that, I kind of jokingly said, in other words, the uh, 49ers haven't gotten an offer that um, John Lynch can't refuse, which is basically be giving up a King's ransom for him. This is also the same John Lynch, so sometimes take 
take what people say for grain of salt. So it's the same John Lynch where it was revealed that he was telling teams in March before the uh, league meetings at the end of the Mar- end of March that he had an offer of two second round picks for Jimmy Garoppolo. If he had that, Jimmy Garoppolo wouldn't be a 49er. So take that for what it's worth. Now, um, that being said. Uh, one of the teams that has been most interested in finding a wide receiver has been the New York Jets in terms of getting a vet. That's one team that has been actively trying to find a wide receiver. They made a push for Tariq Hill, um, came up short. Uh, he went to the Dolphins instead. They offered two second-round picks. They have the 35th and 38th overall pick. 22 sec, uh, their 22 third round pick was 6 and 9th overall. That would never knock the Niners' socks off or be what's considered a King's Ransom. That would never get it done. Um, they've reportedly offered the 10th overall pick to the Seahawks for wide receiver DK Metcalf, and that was um, rejected. Um, I don't think the 10th overall pick would get it done. Now, for the 49ers, if they were going to trade, um, Debo Samuel, we'll see if that happens um, in the next couple of days because the draft first round is um, 5 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Eastern time um, on the uh, 28th, Thursday. But 49ers, if they're going to trade Debo, um, notwithstanding what Lynch said, they're looking. They're, they're going to be looking to replenish some of the draft capital that they had to uh, use to move up from the 12th pick to the third pick to draft Trey Lance. And last year, the 49ers gave the Dolphins their 22 and 23rd, 22 and 23 first round picks and a 22 third round pick for that nine spot move. So their first pick this year is 61. So if you're going to move them, it's going to have to be something which helps replenish that capital and get them at least a first round pick and more. But before we get to the draft compensation, Let's look at some of the other teams which could have a wide receiver, could have a need at wide receiver besides the Jets. Now, the Detroit Lions have been rumored to have an interest in Debo Samuel. They've got the second overall pick. That's off the board. That, that's, that's, that's not something which would come in this trade. They also have um, the 32nd overall pick, which comes from the Rams, um, from the Matthew Stafford trade, and the 34th pick um, in the draft. I can't really see. Those two picks, the 32nd pick wouldn't be all that attractive. And also, one thing you got to look at is cap room as well when we're talking about a trade. And in Debo's case, he's scheduled to make $3.986 million because he earned the proven performance escalator in the collective bargaining agreement. So his salary in 2022 will equal what the second round restricted free agent tender. His is broken up into a three point. Uh, 936 base salary and a fifty thousand dollar workout bonus. He's not showing up for the offseason workout program, and sounds like not by not showing up he'd forfeit that fifty thousand um, dollars. So he'd make three point nine three six should this thing drag out and he continues not to show up for anything which is not mandatory. The Lions have plenty of cap room according to NFLPA data. They've got about eighteen point two million in cap space, so that wouldn't be an issue. Jets. Cap space isn't an issue either. They got $17.3 million of cap space, so you would need the 3.936 or 3.986, depending upon the timing of the trade, to acquire Debo, should there be a trade. Team which needs a receiver in the worst way? Green Bay Packers. After trading um, Devontae Adams to uh, the Oakland, to not the Oakland, um, Las Vegas Raiders. Um, and we know Aaron Rodgers is someone who's never really leaned on or utilized uh, rookie receivers. So having a vet come in that he trusts, that would be ideal for Green Bay. And from a draft capital standpoint, Green Bay has two first-round picks, 22nd, which comes from the Raiders, 28th, their, their own, and two second-round picks, 53rd and 59th. Only problem is, if I'm the San Francisco 49ers, and I'm looking at, being a playoff team with Trey Lance, hoping that he develops the way we thought he would by taking him third overall. I am not helping out the Green Bay Packers. 
in any way, shape, or form. That's a team two out of the last three years who've eliminated from the playoffs. So I am not going to let that team in particular get better. So there is no way in hell if I'm going to trade Debo Samuel and I'm John Lynch that he's going to the San, he's going to the Green Bay Packers. So you can kind of put a pin in that one. Dallas uh, seemed to express some interest. Um, Amari Cooper, whom they were going to release if they hadn't traded him to the Browns. Debo would replace him. Uh, they've got the 24th overall pick. And cap room's not an issue. they got about 15.3, 15.2 uh, million in cap space. So that wouldn't be an issue at all uh, for them. Now, the Baltimore Ravens have never had under Lamar Jackson at quarterback since 2000 when he was drafted in the last pick of the first round in 2018. They haven't had a real dynamic outside receiver. It's a run-heavy offense, and they their go-to guy is Mark Andrews, a tight end. Um, they got Marquise Brown that they drafted first round a couple years ago on the outside, but Debo would add a different dimension to them. They could fit him in, but they've got uh, like 5.93 million in cap space, so that'd be kind of tight. Obviously, if a team doesn't have cap space, you know, it's restructure a contract to get there or two if you had to. Looking at some of the other teams, um, the Indianapolis Colts. It's a kind of maybe a make it or break it year for Chris Bowd, the general manager, and Frank Wright because Jim Irsay definitely was not a Carson Wentz fan. <laughs> Wasn't his idea to trade for him. Didn't like him when he was there. Shipped him out to the Washington Commanders. So they traded for Matt Ryan. Uh, who I think is 37, older quarterback, and if they don't make the playoffs, you're probably going to see wholesale changes. That's a team that needs to play for now, and Debo Samuel would probably put them over the top in the AFC South to win the division. Titans are probably going to be their biggest threat, who are the defending um, champions. One problem, they have a first-round pick, thanks to Carson Wentz. Philadelphia has a first-round pick. The trade capital makes that difficult. So we don't even have to worry about their cap space because the trade capital, even though they have uh, plenty of cap room where they could absorb Debo's contract, that it just isn't going to, that it really isn't, it isn't really going to be a consideration for them. They got like 15 one of cap space, but uh, not really something that I see feasible because of the lack of draft, draft capital for the Indianapolis Colts. Kansas City Chiefs have the 29th and 30th picks in in the first round, but they weren't willing to pay Tyreek Hill and shipped him off to Miami. So if you weren't willing to pay Tyreek Hill, then you obviously don't want to put that type of investment into a wide receiver, so it doesn't really make sense despite the glaring need, even though they have 18 million cap space. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles have two first-round picks, 15th and 18th. And they have $14 million of cap space. Their big issue was they picked the wrong receiver in 2020. Jalen Rieger, 21st overall pick, hadn't panned out. Yeah, they're probably going to end up taking a receiver in the first round. Um, or at least one of those two picks. It's a good possibility that they would. But um, San Francisco's receptive. This is another team that makes sense. And the final team we're going to bring up, um, Atlanta Falcons. They don't have any receivers. Russell Gage went to Tampa Bay as a free agent. Calvin Ridley is suspended for indefinitely, which may just be a year, for betting on NFL games. That's the big no-no in terms of integrity of the game. Even though he was not playing, you can't bet on games. And they got Kyle Pitts as tight end, who they picked last year first round fourth overall pick but they don't have anybody (laughs) legitimate pass catchers one problem is under cap room they have about 1.71 million cap space so (laughs) would you be let's say san francisco is willing to trade them would you be willing to restructure a contract or two uh to fit debo in they have the eighth overall pick um now we've gotten through the teams now let's look at the uh draft compensation, particularly in um, some receiver trades of, of note recently. We've had two this year. Um, 
that happened. First was um, Devontae Adams. Um, Adams was franchised by the Packers and went to the uh, Raiders for 22 first and second round picks this year, 22nd and 53rd overall. We also had um, Tyreek Hill go to the Dolphins for five draft picks. The 22 first round pick, 2022 second round pick, 2022 fourth round pick, 2023 fourth round pick, and 2023 sixth round picks. The, the 2022 picks are 29th, 50th, and 121st overall. Another trade uh, that happened two years ago, the Bills gave the Vikings for Stefan Diggs a 2021st round pick, which was um, 22nd overall, a 2025th round pick, a 2026th round pick, and a 2021 fourth round pick to get Diggs in a 2027th round pick. So the Niners are going to need a huge package to part ways with Debo, um, at least to me, if they're going to do it. I don't think the 10th overall pick for um, the Jets would be enough. Now, if I'm the 49ers by huge package, I'm looking at what are the top trade compensations for non-quarterbacks in the past couple of years or past few years. So that would be what I'd be looking for. You need a King's Ransom, need to knock my socks off for me to part ways with Debo now. Khalil Mack, when the Raiders traded him to the Bears, uh, the Bears gave up a 2019 first-round pick, which was 24th. A 2020 first-round pick, which ended up being 19th. A 2019 sixth-round pick, a 2020 third-round pick. And the Bears got in return with Khalil Mack a 2022nd round pick and a conditional 2025th round pick. Now, um, 2019 around the trading deadline, uh, Jalen Ramsey went from the uh, Jaguars to the Rams for a 2020 first round pick, which ended up being 20th, a 2021 first round pick, and a 2021 fourth round pick. Uh, Laramie Tunsil initially was not on the trading block, <laughs> but the Texans made an offer that the Dolphins couldn't refuse. Uh, 2020 uh, first round pick, a 2021 second round, uh, a 2021 first round pick, 2021 second round pick, uh, two players, um, safety uh, Johnson, uh, Batamosi, offensive tackle Julian Davenport. Then the Texans got uh, Tunsil, a 2020 fir- uh, fourth round pick, uh, 2021 sixth round pick, and wide receiver Kenny Stills. Then we had the Jets. Um, at the start of training camp in 2020, shipped Jamal Adams to Seattle for 2021 first-round pick and a 2022 first-round pick, 2021 third-round pick, and safety Brad Bradley McDougal, and Seattle got Adams and a 2022 fourth-round pick. So you got to come with two first-round picks to me if I'm the 49ers, if I'm going to do this deal. Now, what do I think is fair? I don't think any team is giving up two first-round picks for Debo Samuel. What do I think would be fair um, to get a deal done? Um, and I'd be more trying to put it in line with the Tyreek Hill, Devontae Adams, Stephon Diggs compensation. To me, what would be fair is a 2022 first-round pick. I'm thinking the Jets in mind. That's the 10th overall pick. 2022 third round pick, 69th, and a 2023 second round pick. To me, that'd be fair. But I'm not moving him if I'm the 49ers. I don't blame him unless someone wants to give me two first round picks plus. Then he's staying put. Now, problem is, if you trade for Debo Samuels, let's say someone's willing to meet whatever the 49ers want, then you got to pay him. Now, the most recent data points in the receiver market are Hill's deal. He signed a four-year, $120 million extension with $72.2 million in guarantees. Uh, $52.535 million was fully guaranteed at signing. That's $30 million per year. No, it's on paper $30 million per year, but the practical or realistic value is it's a three-year extension for $75 million. There's $45 million in 2026. Tyreek Hill's never playing for that amount of money. That's just like with Devontae Adams, five-year, $140 million deal. It's really 67.5 over three. There's 72.5 million in the last two years. He's not playing for $36.25 million per year in those final two years. That's a $22.5 million uh, per year deal, practically. 
So when people say Debo's going to need 28, 29 million, no, he's not getting there. Tyreek Hill's at 25. And we saw how that's viewed with the Stefan Diggs deal. Sounds a four year extension for 96 million with 70 million guarantees and 47.95 million fully guaranteed at signing. That's 24 million per year. So that's really what you're at to pay him probably on a three year deal if you want. Um, Debo Samuel. Now, the 49ers don't pay him. <laughs> we'll see if he um, shows up to minicamp. If don't trade him, we'll see if, the, if he shows up to minicamp because I think you could fine him $95,778 for the three days of missed training uh, minicamp. Then if this thing drags on, here's where here's something you won't see. You won't see Debo Samuel miss the start of training camp because he wants to get traded. And here's why. If you don't report to training camp on time, you don't get in the crude season, which is a year of service for free agency. Samuel has three. You need four to be unrestricted. He could play all 17 games. If he doesn't show up, report to training camp on time, no accrued season. Now, he'd have three accrued seasons if he played out his contract, which would make him a restricted free agent. The highest tender for a restricted free agent is a first-round pick. The 49ers very well stick a franchise tag on him because the first-round tender as a restricted free agent wouldn't be enough to deter an offer sheet, which would be hard to match. But you don't want to put yourself in that position, so I have a hard time seeing any player with three accrued seasons not showing up to training camp on time. Um, in addition, he'd be fined $40,000 per day uh, for uh, each day of training camp missed. If you have more, if you have four or more crude seasons, doesn't matter. You don't need another one. But we'll see if someone um, makes an offer the 49ers can't refuse um, in the next couple of days or on the clock of the first round. And if not, then this Debo Samuel thing can get really interesting if he's still a member of the 49ers um, once the first round, particularly after the first round is over or when the draft is over. Well, that's going to be it for this week's uh, Inside the Cap. Uh, thanks for listening. Don't forget, you can find me on Twitter at Corey Joel, that's C-O-R-R-Y, and check out my CBSSports.com column, Agent State. And we'll see you back here next time. Goodbye.